Hi, I'm Norm Abram. Welcome to the new Yankee Workshop. With today's project is this beautiful maple slant top desk on frame. The design was inspired by one we found in a historic house not far from here. That's next, right here on the new Yankee Workshop. The new Yankee Workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. On the night of April 18, 1775, two distinguished American patriots, Samuel Adams and John Hancock, had dinner in this very house. And then a little bit later, around midnight, they were interrupted by Paul Revere, who was riding up the street to tell them that the British were coming. That's part of the history of the Hancock-Clark House, now in the possession of the Lexington Historical Society and open to the public for viewing. And we're here today to look at one of their prized possessions, this slant top desk on frame. And it's even thought that George Washington himself sat at this desk and did some work. It has divided compartments inside, and the writing surface closes to make the slant top. It's supported by these little arms which slide out, and there's one faux draw and one operating draw. And everything sits on this nicely turned frame, probably made from maple. I think this gives us some real good ideas for our slant top desk on frame. When it came time to design our desk, I chose a slant front desk. And this is nice because I can close it up when it's not being used to hide anything from public scrutiny. Also, I chose maple, which is a good hard writing surface. And to make the desk elegant, I set it up on its own frame. Now, the frame has four tapered legs. And I need to put a mortise in each leg to accept the rails. And I'll do that over here on the drill press. Now, I've set up the drill press with a mortising attachment which is really just a drill bit that fits inside a square chisel. So that as you pull down on the drill bit, a hole gets drilled and then the chisel will remove the rest of the material. Now each leg has one straight corner, the outside corner. And then the other sides are slightly tapered. And what you have to remember is that the taper is on the mortise side of the leg. Now to make the taper, I'm going to use my tapering jig, which is just two pieces of wood with a hinge as a pivot. And then back on the other end, there's a little stop to put the wood up against, and an adjustable feature, which really gives me an infinite number of tapers. Now, I have to remember that the taper is not going to start right up at the top here. I want it to start about four and a half inches down so I have a nice square surface for the rails to come into. A little bit of sanding will help smooth up these surfaces and remove any burn marks caused by the ripping operation. The rails all have a tenon on each end which fits into the mortises of the leg. And if you look at the rail from the end, you see that the tenon is perfectly centered. And the first cut that I want to make is this shoulder cut right here. So I've set up a gauge block to give me the correct length of the tenon, and with the blade at the right height, I'm ready to go. With the gauge block in the same position and the blade raised to about a half an inch, I'm ready to make this shoulder cut and nibble away the rest of the material. A couple more adjustments, and now I'm ready to remove the rest of this material right here, this bottom section. A little yellow carpenter's glue on the tenon. And we can assemble one of the corners here, the leg. And now I'll just set it in a pipe clamp and just gently squeeze it together. Now 
Now these holes are for some little dowels which will act as pins just to hold it all together. Well, a couple clamps to hold the side together and I'm ready to doll these legs. And you know the clamps are really only there to hold everything in place while I set the doll. Well now I'll just use my belt sander to remove the excess dowel. These little corner blocks are just made from one by two, cut at a 45 degree angle. And what they do is make the base more stable and they'll give me a place to fasten the desktop to later. Well, that takes care of the frame, and now I'm ready to start working on the desktop. And the first thing I want to do is make this pine frame, which not only supports the draw, but is also part of this slide-out mechanism, which holds the writing surface in place. Well, here are the pieces of pine for the frame, and they're just one by three. And the first thing I want to do is put a groove down the inside edge of the two long pieces. And I've set up my table saw with the adjustable dado head cutter to be about a quarter of an inch wide and a half an inch deep. Now the short end pieces have a tenon, which fits into that groove, like that. Now I'll make these tenons over on the table saw, where I've set up a gauge block and my adjustable dado head cutter. Now the frame is held together using a little bit of yellow carpenter's glue and some brads to hold the corners. All right, this panel cutter sure makes squaring up these big pieces easy. Now this piece of glued up maple, which I've just cut to length, is actually the same size as the pine frame that I made. And that's because it's actually the bottom shelf of the desk compartment. Now I'm ready to cut these side pieces, actually cut the angle on the side pieces, which I'll do over here on the radial arm saw, which is all set up at about a 40 and a quarter degree angle. Didn't quite all cut all the way through, so I'll just finish it with my back saw. If I wet this a little bit here, I think I can show you the next feature. The side panels have two dados, one at the top here for the bottom shelf, and one down here for the pine frame. Now the first one I'm going to do is for the shelf, and I've set up the table saw with the adjustable head dado cutter, and I'm ready to go. <laughs> That takes care of the bottom dado. The next thing to do is to put a dado in this frame. And that'll accept this pine piece, which separates the shelf support from the draw. And I've set up the dado head in the saw, and I'm all ready to go. Now with the desk set on its back, I want to show you another detail. In that separator piece, there's a slot, and that's for a screw to ride in, and that controls the distance that the shelf support comes out. A 
the straight slot is made easily by doing a pass from each side using a quarter inch round nose bit. But now that screw has to be recessed so the head doesn't stick up. So I'm going to change to a tapered bit and put a little groove in there to recess that screw head. Now this whole assembly gets set in the groove of the pine frame. First a little glue and then I'll secure it with some more drywall screws. Okay, that takes care of that subassembly. And now I want to start working on this top shelf. And I'm going to take this glued up blank that I have and put this bevel right here. And that lines up with this side slope. And if you remember, that's 40 and a quarter degrees. And the table saw is all set up to do that. Now I want to just knock off this bottom corner like this. So I'll leave the blade at the same angle, and I've moved the fence just a little bit further away. Now using one of the actual side pieces as a guide, I'll set the top shelf on it, aligning it with that bevel on the front, and flush with the top, and I'll mark the exact width and rip it on the table saw. Well, I think we're off to a pretty good start. Tomorrow, I'll make the rabbit for this plywood back, and we'll get into this dovetailing. Well, good morning. I've got started on those rabbits, and this is the back edge of one of the side pieces. And note that I've stopped about three-eighths of an inch short of the top, and that's because I don't want the rabbit to show on the top edge of the desk. Now, over here, I've set up my dovetailing jig. And this is the top piece, and this is one of the side pieces. And by following this plastic guide, using my router with a dovetail bit and a little collar, I'll get perfect dovetails every time. I will assemble this thing and see how it fits. Hey, the bottom shelf. Dado. Two dados on the other side. Okay, now the top, I'm not going to glue this yet or drive it in all the way. I just want to set it in place to make sure the case is properly aligned. Well, now I'm ready to start working on all these compartments. And these vertical pieces are set into dados at the bottom and at the top, much like these you see on the horizontal pieces. What I've done first is all the layout on the shelf and using a nice straight edge which is clamped in place so that the router can ride against it, I'll plow out each groove using a half inch mortising bit. That's good. Now at the top and bottom of all the vertical pieces, there's this little notch 
and that's so I can conceal the end of the dado. And I just nibble those out on the table saw. And now I'm ready for some assembly. Well, you can never have enough clamps for a project like this. I'm going to let that set for a while while the glue cures and turn my attention to this slant top, which is a series of boards glued together with breadboard edges. And these breadboard edges are going to help keep that top nice and flat. And the first thing that I want to do is put a groove in those edge pieces. And to do that, I'm going to use my router with a quarter inch slot cutter. Okay, now I need to make a tongue on the end of these glued up boards. And I'll do that using the router with the same bit, except I have to adjust my base. Well, now I'm going to have to knock the corners of this tongue off so it'll fit in the groove. And to do that, I'm just going to use a saw and a chisel. Set this aside. And I think the glue is dry enough to take the clamps off this case and start working on the face frame. Well, there's nothing complicated about this little face frame. Just some strips of maple, a narrow piece on the top, a little bit wider one on the bottom, and these little pieces that'll cover the end grain of the separator piece. Now, I'm just gluing and nailing these in place. Well, now for the lid support. Because I don't want to see the end grain on these pieces, I'm going to add this little T molding right here on the front of it. I'm going to make that first. Now a groove in the end of the support.
this little notch in the support piece will stop against that piece I made earlier. And now I'm going to glue the end pieces on, and I think I better get back to work on that slant top. Now on the inside of my slant top, the top edge and the sides have a rabbet, and it's beveled a little bit so that I don't have a real sharp edge here to lean on. And it also gives me a nice lip to close the top against. I'll make that beveled rabbet using a 22 degree beveling bit. And because I want to remove just a little bit of material at a time, I'll have to make several adjustments. Well, that nice beaded edge will be the finished edge for the top side of the slant top. Now there's some hinges that secure the shelf and the top, and I want to mortise those in, make them flush. So I've made a little jig to guide my router, and the router is equipped with a half-inch mortising bit. Watch. Now with the mortise cut, I've got to square up those little corners. And for that, I'm just going to use a little corner chisel. Now some pilot holes for the screws. And now a piece of quarter-inch maple plywood, which I'll attach with my brad tacker. I've been making some of the parts for these little drawers. Let me show you how they go together. The sides are dovetailed into the front, just like I did on the top of the case. Then I put a quarter inch groove in the sides and the front over on the table saw, and that's for this plywood bottom. Then I put two more dados at the back edge on the table saw for the back piece, which fits in like this. I glue and nail these together, and that takes care of the little drawers. Now the large drawer has a rabbited front on the sides and the top. And I'm ready to do that right over here with my router and a rabbiting bit. So now I just dovetail the sides and the front. Now I'm going to put a decorative edge on all four sides of the draw front using a quarter inch round over bit. Now a little scotia molding to go around the bottom edge, and this piece is ready for some fine sanding and then a coat of finish. Well, after much discussion here in the shop, it was decided that the desk should be stained a silver birch. Now I'm not going to let it sit on there very long. I'm going to put it on with a brush and then rub most of it off with a rag so that I can let the natural beauty of the maple show through. And after this stain dries, I'm going to put two coats of a satin finish polyurethane. Well, this project was a challenge. There's no doubt about it. But look at the results. Now, I hope with the help of this videotape and the measured drawing that you'll be able to build one of these too. Now, here are some of the other new Yankee projects that you can build right in your own home workshop. Here's a workbench, a useful item in any shop. This is a drop leaf table, a classic addition to any home. Here is a blanket chest, 
a wonderful heirloom piece to build and have. The bedside table is shaker inspired and a popular piece. Take a look at the bathroom vanity. Its design draws on the dry sinks of the past. This handsome trestle table is patterned after one found on the island of Nantucket. The bookcase, a revival of an old beauty found at Sturbridge Village. The chest of drawers is a traditional piece based on a shaker design. Look at the candle stand with its beautifully turned center column and gently curving legs. Here is a hutch, an indispensable item in any kitchen or dining room. My writing desk is made of maple with a smooth writing surface and lots of useful storage compartments. The corner cupboard makes good use of those often unused areas in your home. Here's a medicine cabinet made from oak and featuring box joints. And there it is, the new Yankee collection. Norm Abram is the author of the book, The New Yankee Workshop, which is available in bookstores and libraries nationwide.